Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Eads, and I want to talk to you on this little video about a new study that's just come out. It's a, a study from data from the Women's Health Initiative. You probably remember that. I blogged on it two or three years ago. It was a study that came out where um, 150, 160,000 women were put on uh, low carb, or, I'm sorry, low fat diets, and uh, were kept on them for a number of years and shown to have no health benefits whatsoever from it. But that study generated a lot of data, and researchers were mining that data now looking for other things. And as it turns out, during this whole study process, 7% of these women uh, were on statin drugs, which is unbelievable to me because statin drugs, if, if you've read any of my blogs, statin drugs provide no health benefits to women whatsoever. They provide no benefit and decreased all-cause mortality. But the 7% of the 150-some thousand women on this study were on statin drugs. So we're going to hear from a woman who is a full professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. So let's see what she, and, and one of the researchers on this study. So let's see what she has to say about it. Hello, this is Dr. Joanne Manson, Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital. I'd like to talk with you today about a recently published study on the link between cholesterol-lowering statin medications and an increased risk of new onset diabetes. A paper was just published online in the January 9th issue of Archives of Internal Medicine. I and my colleagues looked at this question in the Women's Health Initiative in observational analyses Okay, an observational analysis. Now remember, we've talked about this before, that observational studies don't prove causality. So what she's talking about doesn't really prove causality. It just shows that there's an association. So just bear that in mind as she continues to talk. Among more than 153,000 women ages 50 to 79 at baseline, and during follow-up, more than 10,000 cases of diabetes were diagnosed. We found that statin therapy, statins of all types, um, were associated with an increased risk of so statins of all stripes were associated with an increased risk of diabetes. Now remember, this is observational. It's not causality, but it is associated with an increased risk. Diabetes, and overall about a 48% or moderate increase in risk. This was similar. Wow. Let's listen to that again. 48%, is that what she said? Diabetes, and overall about a 48% or moderate a increase in risk. This was similar to the magnitude seen between rosuvastatin um, and diabetes risk in the Jupiter trial. And meta-analyses of randomized trials have further uh, supported that uh, there may be an increased risk of diabetes with all statins with a very wide... So... Other studies besides this one have shown, including randomized control trials, that there has been an increased risk of diabetes with statins. Very interesting. Range of statins, this could be a medication class effect. Our analyses also suggested that this could be a medication class effect. What that means is it's the entire class of statin drugs that's causing the problem, if there is a problem. But the entire, the entire class, doesn't matter if it's Lipitor, Crestor, Zocor, all of them, uh, the entire class of drugs is responsible for this problem. Um, that was re relevant to all forms of statins. We found increased risk of diabetes with both low potency and high potency uh, statins really across the board and there was no clear relationship uh, with dose or with uh, duration of therapy. What, now, what she's saying is it doesn't matter what kind of a statin you take, whether it's one of the, the powerful ones, Crestor, for example, or one of the less powerful ones, Lipitor, doesn't matter what kind of statin you take, doesn't matter how long you take it, doesn't matter how much of it you take, just the, by virtue of the fact that you have taken a statin drug, you put yourself at risk for developing diabetes. Very interesting. The implications of these findings? Well, first, we don't think the findings should change clinical practice guidelines. Can you believe this? That is first and foremost, don't change the clinical guidelines. Even though these things that, that provide no benefit, especially for women, that provide no benefit for women, we don't want you to stop taking them just because you might get diabetes. 
guidelines because for the vast majority of patients who are on statins, the benefits are expected to outweigh the risks. What benefits? There are no benefits for statin drugs, especially for women. There's only one small subset of people for whom statin drugs have shown to provide any benefit at all in terms of reduction in all-cause mortality, and that's men under the age of 65 who have already been diagnosed with heart disease, not men under 65 with high cholesterol, not men under 65 with high blood pressure, but men under 65 who have been diagnosed with heart disease. In other words, they've already had a heart attack or some sort of a coronary event. If you're under 65 and you haven't had that, if you're over 65, it doesn't matter if you've had it or, or you haven't, or if you're a woman, there is no benefit to taking statin drugs. And even some of the studies that show these modest benefits are a little bit bogus. And we're gonna talk about a book that talks about that here in just a minute. But there are no benefits are very effective at lowering risk of heart disease and stroke. No, they're not. Um, and we hope that among the public and patients that there won't be alarm from these findings or abrupt uh, stopping of statin medications. That's what they hope most of all. And that's especially what the pharmaceutical industry wants. They hope that there won't be any stoppage of statins. They hope people won't be alarmed because most people don't know that the statins provide no benefits. And what's sad is most doctors don't know that the statins don't provide more benefits. And so when a patient goes into a doctor, the doctor is going to say, well, you know, there may be, the, if the doctor's even read about this study or the other studies, well, there may be a little bit of risk for diabetes, but uh, you, you've got so much benefit on this other side that it's a risk reward thing. The problem is there are no benefits on the other side. But we do believe that the findings um, should lead to increased vigilance about... <laughs> you think? Uh, ...testing for diabetes in patients who are on statins, that the awareness of this link is important, and that if patients are aware of it and they're aware of the symptoms of diabetes to look for, increased thirst, fre increased frequency of urination, blurred vision, um, that they may be more likely to report these symptoms um, to their clinicians and have uh, diabetes diagnosed earlier than otherwise. <laughs> so... They want you to be extra vigilant while you're on this drug that gives you no benefit. They want you to really be vigilant for the development of diabetes. What I wonder is if you do develop diabetes, do they keep you on the drug? I hope the re this research will stimulate additional um, studies to understand the mechanisms involved. Is this at the level of the liver, the pancreas, the tissues response? To Who cares? The drugs provide no benefit. What difference does it make what the mechanism is? Insulin and also um, spur development of new statins or new medications that won't have these adverse events. That's what they're really interested in. And there are plenty of researchers beavering away right now in their little cubby holes trying to come up with statins that don't show this increased risk of uh, diabetes or um, research that will indicate ways to minimize or avoid um, these risks altogether. For those who advocate um, even more widespread use of statins and virtually uh, putting statins in the water supply. Uh, Statinators, we call them. I think these findings do give pause and suggest that um, perhaps uh, if statins are used even more widely in those at, at lower risk and from very, very early ages. At <laughs> you think it's going to give a statinator pause because a few people get diabetes? I seriously doubt it. And as she says, they're putting them on people that are young ages and at low risk. He doesn't care. Statinators like to statinate. And just because there's a slight risk of diabetes, they don't care. At some point, uh, this increased risk of diabetes really could begin to offset uh, some of the benefits. <laughs> what benefits is it going to offset? There are no benefits to taking statin drugs. Um, unless, there, uh, unless new statins are developed without this risk or new medications are found to be of comparable uh, benefit without the increased risk of diabetes. Um, so overall, I think there, there are some uh, clinical implications, but... 
you think maybe that there are some clinical implications? We definitely do not think that uh, this should lead to abrupt uh, stopping of statin medication. That's what they think most of all, that this should not lead to stopping statin medications. And they think that, and the pharmaceutical industry really thinks that. They do not want you to stop taking statins because this is the biggest class of drugs in terms of money making that exists right now. And woe be it to anyone that, that suggests that they stop it. Patients, thank you very much for listening. This is Dr. Joanne Manson. So, there you have it. This is from a full professor at Harvard Medical School. This is mainstream medicine as it exists today. So, um, this is what you're going to get if you go to your doctor. And I would suggest that uh, you be very careful about going on a statin, especially if you're a female, especially if you're not in a risk group. And the only risk group really are men under 65 who have had heart disease. And even for those people, the risk is minimal, or the risk reduction is minimal. It's very modest uh, indeed. But this is the face of mainstream medicine. I get comments all the time on my blog from people who are bullied by their doctors for minimal increases in cholesterol, bullied by their doctors to go on cholesterol, I mean, on to, to statins. So I would say just, uh, you know, do the Nancy Reagan and just say no and, and don't let your doctor bully you. I mean, statins do reduce cholesterol a little bit, but there is no proof that cholesterol causes heart disease. And as you can see right down below this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about yet a new book that's come out by a, a cardiologist, a practicing cardiologist in California, who also shows in a much different way, an interesting way, he's taking a different approach and looking at this, shows that the, the whole cholesterol hypothesis is bogus and this whole notion that we ought to take statins is bogus. So, Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I've enjoyed it. And uh, take a look at the book down below.